Do I have edit? The music oh, is oh. playing. It's time. The intro music. Nice. That was pretty good. Welcome, fans and subscribers, to episode seven of Last Week in Gaming. Seven episodes, gentlemen. We're here. We did what? it. We're on our way to ten. Wow. We're, we, will, we will get there. With me, special guests returning, Jay, Brian, Nick in the house, and Kumar, coming in by microphone. But he uh, could. You're more considered a special guest at this point. Uh, uh, should we do? Should we do special guests? I, I don't think. I, I don't I think know. We should I make a change. Kumar is pretty much a uh, a. Uh, he's pretty much a co-host. But maybe we should refer to everyone as the panel, or is that too formal? We could do that. Let me turn yeah, to the panel. I could do the panel. The panel. Okay. All of you are part of the panel now. If there is someone. That is, I don't know, from a small business or something that comes on special guest. So we're 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 creating a distinction here between the panel and the special guest. I think that's how we, we should do it. We do sometimes review products live stream. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Well, welcome, welcome to the show panel. Good to have everybody Thank here. Thank you for having us. We have a great show tonight. A packed show. We are going to be talking about Hawk and Reborn, major updates in Destiny last week, including a new shield system and reworking of reticles on weapons. We have a PlayStation showcase that is approaching. We're going to be talking about what we might see in that showcase. We're going to be talking about GFI Thursday, GFN Thursday, excuse me. And we are going to be looking at two trailers that dropped with official release dates. We have mm -hmm. Lords of the Fallen and Mortal Kombat 1. So I'm ready to get into these updates. Hawk and Reborn. This was revived by 505 Games. Now, before I start talking about Reborn, it's relevant for me to talk about the actual game Hawken that came out December 12th of 2012, made by Adhesive Games. There is a huge distinction, a significant distinction, between Hawken Reborn and Hawken. It looks like when 505 Games revived Hawken as Hawken Reborn, it took an interest and focus into PvE, player versus everyone, whereas the original Hawken from 2012 took an interest and was only scoped to PvP, player versus player. In Hawken, you had Team Deathmatch, Original Deathmatch, Co-op Bot, Team Deathmatch, Siege, and Missile Assault. There were in-game purchases as well. So what you're looking at right here in the gameplay, on the left-hand side, you have the Hawken Reborn. That's the newer game that is available for early release as of May 17th, 2023. And then on the right, you have the original Hawken game. So my impressions. The NPCs were interesting. They could be a bit too loquacious for me, but I understand that 505 Games is trying to create a story, is trying to get you into the narrative. And 505 Games did announce that its focus was to create a narrative-driven campaign-like experience. So the plot is the world of Alal, and a planet was once thought to be humanity's future utopia. How pleasant. And it unfortunately has turned into a grim dystopia driven by corporate corruption and greed. Reminds me of Borderlands that, a little bit there with corruption. What's that, Nick, in the house? I was just going to say that is shocking that the corporate world corrupted things. I mean, look at it. Heard of. It's awful. Look at, the, look at those visuals right there on the left. Just awful. Yeah, come on. And the atmosphere has a poison in it from terraforming that has taken place. A terrible accident gave birth to the Giga, which is a nanite plague, and it's ravished at least half of the planet. 
I, I love the mech games. I really do. I don't know how many of you played Mech Assault, which was back in 2002, or played the classic Titanfall, and there was even a Titanfall 2, but Titanfall was 2014. I won't say this is Titanfall. I don't think anything... Jump in here. But Titanfall is... It's the apex. No, no. This is the game that... Titanfall maybe based some of the stuff... This is the failed game that Titanfall maybe based their ideas off of. I mean, you know, this game can't compete with an actual Titanfall game. This came out when, you said? It's early release, May 17th, 2023. So we don't know if... No, 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 no. Uh, when the original came out. Oh, the original was 2012, so two years before yeah, Titanfall. Even, even now, even with the re, re, uh, uh, remaster or whatever else redone, you, it's not going to compete with Titanfall or even it's, Apex Legends, for that matter. It's just not going to do it. And you, can I'm, a, I'm, a big mecha, yeah. I'm a big mecha fan, too. I love the mecha stuff. It's great, but... Uh, Titanfall, as we you've learned from one of my last videos I was in with you, I, I love Titanfall, and it's just it's not going to compete. I really want a Titanfall three, and I understand from Respawn, they're uh, I know. waiting on the right time. I, I I don't know how this isn't the right time. We have this, and it's underwhelming the, compared to Titanfall. It's the right time. The fans want the game. I I don't know if they're waiting. They're for the so wind focused to blow on Apex, a way. Apex Legends, man. They're so focused on it. I mean, Apex Legends is one of the most, what, what, number one or number two most grossing games in the last two, three years. I've heard mixed I mean, reviews it, about two, but one. It, 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 it still makes a ton of money. I mean, it, and like I said, my brother and I, we do, we've kind of gotten out of it a lot because of, I mean, somebody else can maybe back me up here, but it used to be a run and gun kind of game where now. They've introduced so many sniper rifles that people find high point, and if if you're walking by, you're gonna get domed. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, it just become too much of a pain in the butt for us to deal with. But there's still a lot. If you if you look at uh, how many people are playing what games out there, Apex Legends is still one of the most top place played games out there. Yeah. Well, Hawk and Reborn and. And Apex Legends clearly have their differences. The plot to Reborn, also another another addition to the plot I'd like to mention is that the main character that you play as, that operates the mech that you see on the left-hand side, is unable to communicate. Now, I'm, I mean that literally. It was said in the narrative, you are unable to communicate. And I'm thinking, okay, how are you going to create a story with, someone you're not able to communicate with because clearly the person takes orders to get to objectives. So there's a means of communication there unless it's unilateral and not bilateral. But I, I found that, found that to be odd. Now I will say one of the complaints from Titanfall, which I don't even like to mention any complaints was it didn't have a strong narrative driven story and Titanfall two introduce a campaign of sorts in that a stronger one than just some introductory missions like in Titanfall, but I don't think Titanfall was made to be a narrative-driven story. I don't Dude, think that was the Titanfall situation. actually had a pretty good story to it. I mean, if you consider a lot of other games that are out there now, Titanfall had a more narrative to it than a lot of the new games. A lot All of right, the Brian, games out now are just, you yo, yeah, come on, Brian. What's give me, a, what's buddy. Wrong, give me, give me, give me, give me. What's wrong? And and this is how this is how even a couple of years in age difference matters so much in this this particular case. So th this is not supposed to compete with Titanfall. Titanfall was never supposed to compete with anything. Titanfall was created in a hurry to fill a gap because the developers behind the Mech Warrior and Mech Assault series stopped making games. When that happened, there was a void. All these people loved those two games or that, that series of games. And they came out with Titanfall and everybody got super excited. And, and Titanfall was a lot of people's first introduction into these mecha games. And, you know, I understand how people would, would compare this game to Titanfall. However... This is almost a one-for-one for, one for most 
of the Mech Assault slash Mech Warrior games. Understood. I, I mean, as far as the control interface, the the UI, inter- all of it, it's very similar. I think we were just grouping the mech like games. I mean, no, he's not wrong though. Yeah, I can't, I, I can't argue with him because the first real mech game that I played was Titanfall. So, if anybody who played this game before, I mean, to me, it looks like a good version of Titanfall. But to him, it might be this is what this is it. This is what this is. This is a great version of it. I mean, I, I can't argue with him, Nick. How do you feel about mechs? I would say your first is always special. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm thinking that um, too. Yeah. yeah. Me, it was mech assault. But now you are a Battlefield 2042. I say you are a subject matter expert. Mechs and Battlefield. Would you use it? Uh, it may, who knows, it may end up being the future of we're Battlefield. They're talking about the future stuff. They could I, have a special character. Yeah, that would. The, yeah, with the perk, the feature. Yeah, free. I like the free, free movement. I'm not sure that, you know, being a, encumbered in a several ton uh, uniform is uh, liberating, you know, and fast moving. Well, in Hawk and Reborn, just, just, you, you can go fast. You can you can sprint, which is basically some sort of mechanized levitation that pushes you forward. And then there's also the dart from left to right that you can do. So there is some sense of mobility. Anyways, Jay, you were going to say something. No, 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 no. Nick's right. You know, um, I'm more of a run and gun type of player too, which is what Titanfall did correctly. Is that you could jump out of that mech and you could run and gun and you could call your mech whatever you, or you could you could uh give the uh, your mech the option okay i've called you down okay you just go ahead and self-defend this area i can't like i said i can't disagree or agree with brian because you know if, if you played this game maybe this was actually really really good but again i'm more of a run and gun type of player i liked the way that you could or like Nick said, you, you kind of locked in to this slow moving mech. Yeah, we're not talking you're right. reborn. So, you're right. So you probably, if you played any of the, if you had the opportunity, and I, I, I don't know, I haven't looked to see whether it's on the Xbox Retro Marketplace. There was a 360 game called uh, Mech Assault 2 Lone Wolf. Mm. And mm-hmm. that does exactly what you're talking about. You had, so there was, there was basically the big mechs, and then you could get out of the big mech, run around, and then there was a little exosuit that you could get into, and you could get, and you could go find a mech to hack, and you could okay. hack into a, a, a so different. Mech and then Titanfall take is more of a a combination of between these two games. Uh, basically, okay, all right. Like Again, I like I said, it just, when I started really getting into it, the, I mean, I'm just going off of what I know. That's why, like I said, when I talked to Brian, and he's saying that, look, this is. What it is, I can't, I can't argue with him. I mean, he he knows what he's talking about, obviously. And again, this looks cool as heck, but I would love, like Brian said, the ability to get out when I want to and go run and gun. Well, hopefully, five hundred five games is taking into account any feedback that they are getting and can actually turn this into an awesome game. I would say it has potential, but and it is early release. It's still. Still needs some further development in mechanics, maybe even plot. Good so, uh, here. I guess a quick question: Do they have classes where there's large mechs who go with big, powerful, and small, which go for quick, but at the sacrifice of power? Right, the different strategies: who wins? Oh, there are different mechs. Yes, lightweight. Different classes. Well, against each other, though, right? Um, it, it is speed, uh, power, which they say, um, you know, you can be big and heavy, but if you can't deliver, uh, then what's the sense? Right. And then there's always a, there's always a drawback too. So you could be heavily armored, but you, you shoot pellets, you know, rather, and you could be uh, on the opposite side, you could be a glass cannon, you know, it just depends on, on 
how you want to how you want to go about it. And that's what was great about the Mech Warrior series is all that online play. You customized your mech the way that you wanted to with all the parts that you've unlocked or you know things like that. And then you go out and you you play with other players. And it, you could do co-op mode where you're battling waves of enemies coming in, or there was the versus arenas. It was it was awesome. Yeah, but yeah. wouldn't you to, to engineer something properly? You have to know the the opponent, the strengths and and weaknesses to play off of that, right? So if you're playing other people and everything is a wild card, you could come up with the the best engineered uh, mech for one scenario or two. But, you know, all somebody has to do is play the opposite side and you didn't even know that that, that they were going to come in in that style and, you, and you'd be unprepared and ill-suited. That's with every game you play with, with this kind of gameplay. I mean, again, based on Titanfall, haven't played this, you guys maybe have. I mean, Titanfall was the same way. You had different classes of Titans that you could pull. Like Brian said, the, the, the more agile um titans you had they could hit like a mech truck however they were more susceptible to taking damage it, it, it it's a really cool concept i mean you know I, I love these mech games i wish they'd make more of them and again i wish titanfall would come out with with three. another version yeah i got a mighty what i would i would love them to come out with another one titanfall 3 and unreal engine 5 <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> that would be cool. All right, that is our update for Hawken Reborn. Transitioning to the Guardian Games 2023, it is wrapping oh, up. Hell. We are on week three, gentlemen. Gentlemen, the Titans have been in first place, and we don't have an official confirmation, but it looks like. They're going to have this one this year. Second place is going to be the Hunters. Third place is going to be the Warlocks. Second place is the Hunters? Second place is the Hunters. They, no way. As of approximately five days ago, they have a score of four. <laughs> and they, even if they won every remaining day from those five days ago up until... Today they would have a score so wait, wait, of nine. First place is the Titans, right? Yeah, first place is the Titans. All right, before you say anything, Brian, shut up. <laughs> so the there's a re there was a Reddit post that the channel found that talked about five days ago who is in first, second, and third, talking about the scores and how the hunters might be able po possibly be able to win, but that's invalidated because even if they won the remaining days, they still would be under nine. So the, the Titans really, really have this one. And for the past week, those that have been playing, fans that have been playing, probably you have been most likely working on your champ title, going through the different, different tasks to complete to get that. And that is quite a bit of work. We do have a link for that in the description for those that are interested in that. And then we transition to Season 21, Season of the Deep. Any thoughts on the Guardian games, gentlemen? Brian Boring. is elated. Boring. I mean, again, I'm a, I'm a Destiny player. Um, so are you, Joe. Uh, Brian, when we can talk him into it, uh, he's a Destiny player. Again, it, it, it's a... Uh, when the new season came out, or when the new um, expansion came out, I was all about it. I played it for the first three, four, five weeks, and I just grinded the crap out of it. Um, and then it became what Ryan had mentioned previously before. It is the same thing over and over and over and over again. It becomes very dull and very bleak. This is a beautiful game. I love Destiny. Like I t told you, maybe one of the videos that we had had before. This is a game that I love to hate because I love this game. I played it from when D1 first launched, you know, way back when. I don't remember the year that was now. To now. 2014, 2014. I think. Yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous. I've played this game, played this game. I just got done playing it again. I played the new raid. Um, Timor, you were in that raid with us, were you not? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. The we did the new raid, raid and everything else. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually really looking forward to the new season just because I'm hoping there's something new for us to do. I'm hoping that the new dungeon that's supposed to drop, I'm really excited about the new dungeon. Can we talk about something that else to do? And daily gaming updates as well. And there is a there is speculation that it may take place underwater and there is a new area on Titan for that dungeon, but not well, has anybody, confirmed. has anybody said when the new dungeon is supposed to drop in this new season, it's not going to be the first week. I don't have that information in front of me in the, yeah, in this week at Bungie that came out for the past week. Nothing was mentioned on a dungeon. We do have, some updates in our next segments on what's coming to season of the deep season 21, some changes that are coming, but nothing yet of a new dungeon. From what I've read, the new dungeon is supposed to drop this upcoming season, yeah. which is to state start tomorrow um, or today, I guess it depending on when this channel comes out or this show comes out. But, uh, like I said, I'm I'm really really looking forward to it. The new dungeon is a 10k. If you want to put it that way, it's a lot of running and a lot of walking for no dag on reason. Scenery looks beautiful. Don't get me wrong, but that's what they based the new raid off of. Is hey, looks looks cool. Let's just run a hundred miles before we get to any new 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 spot. And jumping puzzles. Mm. <laughs> yeah, we can't wait for your day going very power to uh, get the through fairy that. So, gentlemen, I have fairy power as a warlock, and I have <laughs> the superior ability to float like you a fairy. You do not. Okay, you, you can float a fairy superiorly, but you cannot jump superiorly. That's for day going short. What, what okay. happens? So, did you ever play uh, Super Mario Brothers 2? Is that when you can get the tail? No, that was three. So okay. two. Uh, so in the United States, Super Mario 2 was originally supposed to be some other game, but it ended up getting reskinned as a Mario game. Um, but Princess Peach had this thing where she would jump and she would glide and then land. That's fairy um, power. That's fairy Jay power. Will, Jay will very, agree. very good. Very, very, very good. Awesome jumps. Well, very, very good. It does surprise me from time to time when the fairy power can jump unbelievable distances for some reason, but they have no control. So, I mean, once they make that jump, as we've seen time and time and time again and with Joe and Kumar trying to make really weird jumps, and this, it don't happen. And this, <laughs> yeah, and this may just be me, but the landings can be a bit rough. I'd have to talk to other mm -hmm. warlocks. Let us know in the comments if you're a warlock using well, fairy ask, power. Ask, ask, ask Kronos. He's a, he's a titan. I mean, it, okay, so... I'm talking he, about the warlocks it, with fairy power. I know, I know, I know, but as a... You have three different classes right here. You yeah. have me as a hunter, you have you and Kumar as a warlock, and you have Kronos as a, uh, as a, as a titan. And then we will get Nick we, 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 we've all, some we've all three We've all happen. three played different classes. Yeah. I mean, I've played Warlock. I've played, I've played them all. But as far as control goes for jumping, you, you cannot beat the Hunter and the Titan. I mean, we have way, way, way more control than a Warlock. Let us know in the comments what you think. Some good, good commentary. Good commentary there. We need to get Nick to play Destiny. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm working you, need on... to, you do need to branch out. You need to branch out, brother. I could one day. We will one see. Day. How about tomorrow? When Tomorrow's he, a when new season. Gets, right, one Come on, man. <laughs> when he gets enough red, when he gets all the reds in Battlefield 2042, and there are no Good more Lord. reds to get, then, I, I mean, what else are you going to do? Oh, <laughs> then you have to. Until they drop new seasonal content with, with more reds Next that week. you can get. Yeah. Guardian games. Game, so, so just to let you know, games are supposed to be frustrating, right? You're oh, never, absolutely. Yeah, you're not supposed to feel fulfilled. You're supposed to be like, I can do better. I know I can do better. That's how Destiny makes me feel, at least. You know. No, that's why I play when I feel with Joe and damn Brian when I play Destiny. 
every yeah. every damn time I get on there, every every damn map. Oh, warlock can do that. Oh, a titan can do that. Some of you guys suck. <laughs> exactly. Nicely summed up. Exactly. <laughs> All right. You better choice words for that, but we'll we'll leave it there. <laughs> All right, Guardian Games 2023, week three. It won't be until next year. We will see the Guardian Games return. Looking at our next Destiny update, a new shield system is going to be introduced into Season of the Deep Season 21. What you're looking at right here is a comparison, and this was on the This Week at Bungie update, a comparison of the old shield system with the new shield system. For those that may not know, the old shield system in Destiny has been in service since 2017. And the idea or the concept of the system is based on the color of the shield. You know what elemental to use to combat the shield and take it down. But that's the only information that you have. It's, an, it's intuitive based on the color. But now what Bungie is going to introduce is an updated shield system, and it's going to have more visual artifacts with each shield type. In this way, players can observe an indication to which elemental weapon types are optimal to use against those enemy shields. And, Jay, feel free to express oh, your comments here. The, the shields look different for the, well, the They new look different, but, I mean, it's not anybody who's played Destiny, even, even Brian, who is not a huge Destiny fan, you know, you've played the game long enough to know which character is normally going to carry which type of shield. So even though they change the looks of it, so that one looks like an egg. It you, does. You're, right, okay, so that looks like an egg. Well, on your top part of your screen, whenever you were playing it, it's just a an actual shield. It's not changing the architect or the, the the archetype of the weapon yeah. so it's going to either be arc no. void or solar yeah or the foundation the is the same it's so the information. they're not they're not changing really anything other than just the way that it looks which no, they, doesn't they are. mean much oh they are yeah so if you pay attention to that clip what you'll notice is the shield isn't there until it's shot and then it deploys out. So you won't know what the shield type is until you shoot them But see, that, that's where I'm getting at, is if you've played this game long enough, um, you know that Minotaurs in this game are all void. The, but that's, it, that's what they're saying, is, is, but that changes. It changes for them in, in the Nightfalls and stuff like that. Well, like it normally doesn't, we'll have- but if they did do that, if they did change it to where all of a sudden that Minotaurs, like in this case, became solar, that would be a big deal, like Brian's saying. It, it, like I said, all of your Minotaurs, all your Vex usually are Void or Arc. If you change it to where all of a sudden they are Arc or Strand, that makes a big deal, like Brian's saying. Now, it, again, same thing. Um, if you're talking about your uh, Cabal, Nine times out of ten, they're either void or solar. If you change that up and take make them, you know, void or arc, okay, well that that makes a bigger, a much bigger difference. So my takeaway is different uh, from that would be that tells me the first shot is is just a test. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's what Brian's saying is that you know you don't know in this new in this new season what these guys could be if they change this up and they switch it around to what different character or what PVE characters could be. You know, you could have different stuff. So that first shot, even if a kinetic weapon could shot, it would be like okay, well they start glowing the specific type of damage that you need to do, which would be. Again, if they change it up, differently. People who have played Destiny for a long time, if they didn't actually change this to where you know the Vex is this and you know the Cabal is this, then it's going to be, again, we know what it's going to be. So the only difference is tactically now you have to 
pause something so that you can see what the shield is to know what your strength is or what to do against it. So if if it, Destiny or if Bungie actually made the changes. Well, it also means that any shielded enemies will will be harder to spot in a group. Oh uh, yeah. You, yeah, yeah. So you might you might end up having like one of those scions that has a shield around it in a group of a bunch of other ads and then you're like, "Oh crap." You know, you don't have a solar weapon out. Again, he he ain't wrong. Because because if you look at the top part of the screen, you know those guys stand out like crazy. You know the ones that got the the the, the uh, void shield on it. Whereas now they look more like an that egg. But they got more like an aurora mm -hmm. type of look to them. It it if Brian's right, you know if you have like this mob of ads and you throw a grenade out in the middle of that thicket, you're going to kill or or a uh, a bow for that matter, like a, a quiver or whatever else. You throw it out in the middle of that, and you think, okay, I'm good. And you walk away from it. Well, there might be one of those guys out there hiding that you don't see. I mean, it, I don't know how they're going to handle it. I would like to see, like, Brian's kind of kind of saying that you, they kind of change this stuff around to where maybe not all Minotaurs have to be void. Maybe they can be solar. That would really make the game harder, make the game more challenging, and make it more fun. And that's an interesting concept that you talk about jay with this new shield system is there going to be versatility well, in brian it? brought it up i mean it was more of a brian kind of idea again I, i've played this game so much that i know i, I mean i could tell you i play this game every strike every nightfall everything before if i know the name of the strike i know exactly what weapons to carry because I know that the Vex are going to do this. I know that the, the, the Cabal are going to do that. And I know that the... Uh, uh... God, please help me. What's the other class? Cabal. The... Oh, but so the Hive. It, it, but the Hive. The, so that's hive. Yeah, I know what they're going to do. I know what their, sh their shields are going to be. And pl blah, 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 blah. Now, if Brian's right, and they change this stuff. Say they change well, the... I'm just the... That they could. Because oh, right, 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 right. We have, right. Yeah, we have to could. see and practice how this is going right, to be. Right, right. And if they could, and if they did change it, say that that Minotaur it all of a sudden becomes an arc shield. Holy crap. That makes the game, you have to think about each strike, each uh, nightfall, each dungeon completely differently if they give all these different enemies different overshields. Same thing. It... Kumar, right, no, no, Nick. Oh yeah, Nick, and then let, let's get Kumar's uh, input as well. I was just go ahead, Nick. And, you know, uh, send in your lower uh, lower fighters. Let them do the testing. Hold your hold your uh, firepower back, and and you know, as you learn, then you use. Someone plays chicken. Yeah. No, 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 absolutely. And that's what Destiny is. I mean, because unfortunately, it has to be because you only have a fire team of three. Yeah. When you're getting to the, the end game stuff, you only have three players. So, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where you're going to learn it or you're not. And it, if you get it wrong, you're done. Kumar, new shield system. What are your thoughts? Uh, First impressions. I'm excited to try it out. Well, there Hopefully you have it. Kumar, table, if Kumar table. is excited to try Kumar's it out. Kumar's words of wisdom. Then I, I'm, I'm <laughs> elated. I am, yeah. I do, get, I do Nick, like Nick the visual play. of the, the new system. No, no, yeah, I, it is It is much more... Uh, it's easier on the eyes. Seamless. It's more seamless. Yeah. And it does look cooler than the old uh, grid around them. Yeah. I'm a visual guy. But, I, mean, I, I need that. Like I said, I, it, it just doesn't look like they're going to do what I, I, I hope they would do. I mean, you see on the top hand part of the screen where you see this cage of void around that minotaur and then okay well you see a egg around the minotaur which is still void yeah. so it is still going to be the uh, i'm thinking it's still going to be the same power or the same uh uh special weapon i'm interested so to see what additions are made to this and more details to come out for it in season of the deep we can provide more analysis as well in future episodes nick i think you had something yeah. I was going to say, um, you did bring up, a, you know, one sense, right, is sight. Um, sometimes uh, tools of such give off sound. Do we know if there's different sounds? 
with different devices, different shields? They haven't said anything in the new TWAB according to this. Yeah. I mean, I read about this. Um, it, 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 this is really more of a visual effect mm -hmm. from what I from what I understand. I haven't read any more about it, but I mean, it, they're, they're changing much. the way it looks. Yeah, there's not there's not but, much. I would say one good paragraph split up into four paragraphs. The only visual the, or the only sound effect that they've changed would be uh, they're thinking about barium or uh, barrier champions. Barrier champions have a little bit of a different sound whenever you stun them. Between when you stun them and between whenever you actually break their barrier, there's going to be a different sound. Mm -hmm. Brian, you are on mute. <laughs> <laughs> that was that. That was that. Uh, that weird, like mechanical sound. sound. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Anyways, Brian, what, what are your thoughts? What were you going to say? Or saying, yeah, Brian says he's going to get on with this with us next week, and he's going to start playing Destiny again. I'm so excited. I, I, would, I would play World of Warcraft again before I ever. Oh my Destiny. God! Don't no, you wouldn't. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, actually, uh, World World of Warcraft Classic is on Wrath of the Lich King now. Oh, that's my shit. Uh, yeah. Shut up, Kumar. Hey, no, I don't I, I encourage him. We'll have to do a guest segment on that. That's that's a good idea. We will we will hold that discussion for a guest segment. So, any other thoughts on the shields, gentlemen? All right, that is our update for the new shield system coming out in Season of the Deep. Transitioning next for our updates in Destiny, new strand abilities. We talked about these in a former episode of Last Week in Gaming, but we didn't have any video. And this week at Bungie's article update provides us some video of the different strands for the Hunter, Warlock, and the Titan. To remind those that are interested, the Hunter has the Threaded Spectre, the Titan has the Flechetti Storm, and the Warlock has the Wanderer. The Threaded Spectre, it leaves behind a decoy woven from Strand Matter that draws the attention of nearby combatants. After taking significant damage or when combating, or when combatants approach, excuse me, the decoy detonates, dealing damage and releasing Threadlings that seek out and attack nearby foes. The Flechetti Storm. When sliding, activate your charged melee ability, the Titan would do that, to leap into the air knocking nearby targets away and dealing damage. While airborne, activate your charge melee again to launch a cluster of damaging, unraveling projectiles. And this can be repeatedly done through activating melee with chained additional throws. The Wanderer for the Warlock tangles you throw, attach to enemies, and detonate into a suspending burst. Threadling final blows create a tangle, which the Warlock is very well known to be able to do with those strand overpowered builds. Gentlemen, what do we think of these? Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Yeah. I mean, we have cool. the PlayStation showcase upcoming, so we may see him. I mean, I'm a, a I'm a hunter guy, right? When I see what the hunter's doing here, I can't help but go back to the original, like, Mortal Kombat. Me, no. I'm thinking Sub Zero. I'm thinking, you know, dodge back. I want to back, talk about Mortal create, Kombat create, too in this show. It's all coming <laughs> together. I'm thinking dodge back, create yourself a little ice, decoy of yourself to where the you, the enemy can't jump over it, and they had to they had to hit it first. I mean, no, this is a hundred percent Fortnite, is what this is like. Fortnite. Oh, that's an interesting. About? That's an interesting. Yeah. What are you doing? Uh, angle please. there? Elaborate. <laughs> Have you seen the the stupid people running around playing as like Spider Man in Fortnite and crap like that? It's literally this is the same. Oh, kind. you're th you're just talking Strand in general. Uh, I'm I'm yes, yeah, Strand is a. Uh... I mean, you got you got the Titan that's got like blade arms, but the blade arms are shooting projectiles. It reminds me of Prototype. Weird. Those games. I don't know if like, you remember. But, like, oh, but if, if I got blade arms and I'm a titan, I want to punch things with the blade arms, not not shoot balls. 
I, I, I just that 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 makes little sense to me. I the have Warlock, played the against Warlock those like, blade hey, arms. Throw some grenades, and then I'll throw a bigger grenade that does like a Darth Vader. It would force even worse. Makes you dance in the air. Like so I, I have played against both of those. I'm, again, I'm a hunter, right? I have played against both the Warlock and the Titans in PvP. Those guys suck. They 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 hurt like hell. They kill you easily. It is. Spider-Man on steroids. It's not just Spider-Man. It's Spider-Man on steroids. They, they, the, that that green stuff that the Titan can throw at you, as you, Kronos, as a Titan, Titan kind of guy, you kill me instantly. If, if I get caught in spider. that, if I get caught in that, you, I'm hung up in the dang on web. When you throw that dang on blade up, all you gotta do is shoot me in the face once. I'm dead. Um, I wish that the Hunter would have had something a little bit better. Hunter is more obviously. This is a PvP trait or PVE. Sorry, PVE trait that the hunter got. Great, I guess. But in PVE, this serves us no purpose. The warlocks and the titans will absolutely crush us as far as this aspect goes. This is not going to help us one bit. So they're going to balance it. Um, but, Eventually, yes, you're right. You know, they will balance it. So here's the thing, though. Like the 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 hunters have not really gotten a solid PVE class oh, since since the void bow. So like you've got the void bow hey, and you right. those are basically the only two viable PVE classes a hunter has. Everything else is PVP. So Did honestly, I not say that give you guys Joe. a PVE class finally after years. You know, I'm okay with it. You know, and the people are going to be upset that, oh, I can't really use this is garbage in PvP. That's cool. But people in, that play PvE and play the raids and crap have been waiting for something different for years. Brian, you're my hero, bro. He's going no, to come no, back no, to Brian, Destiny. If you, watched back. Our last video, if you watched our last video, with, uh, right I there. was in with Brian. Dude, you are my hero. I, I literally had this exact same argument that the Hunters have been absolutely screwed when it comes to PvE. All we have is our, our quiver or our bow, right? And other than that, we've been screwed. Whereas the Hunters and the Warlocks, or I'm sorry, Warlocks and the Titans have gotten so much. Dude, the Blueberry, damn Titan. I mean, can you beat that in, in PvP, PvE? No, it thinks, it thinks a monster. But I mean, it's still in PVE or PVP too. So to have this in the hunter's form as PVE, pretty cool to have something new that we can use. But yeah, dude, it, it, it's been a weirdly, really weird sided thing for me. Again, being a hunter main. Nick is Brian is Brian Jay's hero. I need to know. I saw that. Brian is my hero now. He said what I've been saying for the whole daggone last three years. <laughs> Just be the best hunter you can be. That's all we can ask. <laughs> Kumar, thoughts? Which aspect are you going to be using, sir? He's a warlock. What do you expect him to be using? Didn't know if he, he'd switch. No, he went to go eat dinner. He went to go eat <laughs> right, that's what you that's what you get when you crash the show. You stay a little while and then you go and then he'll he'll randomly come back. That's Kumar. All right. The new aspects. That is our update on that. Hero Brian. You're my hero, buddy. <laughs> Moving to our next update. Another Destiny update. The weapon change preview. There has been some significant work that has been done that will release in season 21 season of the deep on inspection screen improvements weapon changes preview which is what we have been provided in this last week for updates and also changes made to field of view and reticles on weapons specifically displaying and showing more information that you would not see initially through the reticle and there are quite a few weapons that have had changes and also swords as well that have had some changes at least one sword here that i am 
seeing in the list. Hey, I've got one question yes. altogether. Who 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 is playing on the bottom screen? This is a video that was provided by Bungie to show off the new reticle system. So that's what are they doing? They, they they suck that bad, or what's going on? Like, what, I, when are I they think doing? it's a matter of just trying to show the information available when using the reticle and field of view. That they should have done a better job. My God, take it up with Bungie. Jesus. Yeah, take it up with Bungie. But I, I will say in the top screen, top of the screen here, you can see an improved inspection screen. Yeah. And then the bottom video that you are seeing is the information available through the reticle. And as far as... They need to hire, they need to hire me or Days to dig on do that bottom screen stuff. Holy Lord. Well, is there is are we seeing information? I'm I'm not I'm only on my phone here. Uh, are we seeing information that's valuable um, in that regard? Is no, there... <laughs> no, I'm with Nick. I mean, there there there's no valuable information here. So that's, that's again, this is this is really accurate. So so the biggest changes are are when you're not aimed in. So that reticle on the center of your screen is actually changing depending on the weapon that you have and that's that's kind of new okay if there's uh, if they're specifically focusing on that then i see that i see what you mean i, I see how that when i aim in that the reticle does change but i'm still focusing on on the the bot work that whoever is doing this <laughs> yeah It's hard to get away from the bot work that is doing this. A list of weapons that are getting updates are overall, we're going to see rebuilt reticles for the fusion rifle, the hand cannon, the sidearm, and the trace rifle. Sword reticles will now show in the new season. We'll show the current sword guard energy. Fusion rifles will have okay. a charge meter under the reticle as well. Specific weapons getting updates are Devil's Ruin, Salvation's Grip, Grand Overture. If any of these stand out as a weapon you use, then feel free to... I bet you that, that, that vertical change is specific on a perk, too, that you get on that gun. Which one? Any of them weapon, Any of the weapons, I so, bet you that vertical change is specific towards the, a specific perk that you have. So if you have a perk that is, you know, uh, sniper... Um, yeah, the, the charge meter is coming to the Devil's Ruin, Salvation's Grip, and Grand Overture. That's going to be right. with the yeah, Those are exotic. I'm going to just... No, so, the, the like... so remember how a lot of the reticles for the exotics would show things like your, your ammo count. It would have, like, when you're charging it, part of the reticle would shift. So instead of it being specific to certain exotics, they've decided to ch implement that across the board. So if you look closely at a lot of these, a lot of these things, so you see the the arrow count underneath for that quiver when he's shooting with the uh, when he's shooting with the the shotgun. You can see the slug count underneath the reticle, um, and then with the fusion rifle, you can see when he charges up the fusion rifle. Um, there's a red bar that goes up both sides of the radical. And, and that information is important, right? You can't go fighting, you know, numerous enemies when you've got one quiver left. Or it's, one a, it's, a, it's a good, it's a good, uh, what was it, change of life kind of uh, update, but as far as bows and everything, you, life you have unlimited, so yeah, yeah, you, you have been, I mean, for bows and stuff like you if you're using a bow, you have unlimited ammo anyways. And that might change with the, I, mean, I don't with, know. The, with kinetic. kinetic. Yeah, right. right, right. Yeah, not the, yeah. the Well, no, no, bows. no. Any bows. Even, oh, any bow? even, okay. energy, even, even energy bows. Even now, energy. the only okay. bow that you would have, is there a heavy, is there a heavy bow? I don't think there is. Yes, yeah, I mean, uh, the Le uh, Leviathan's breath. No, whatever it is. It's, but there is one heavy uh, one heavy bow. Yeah, I mean, but that's the only bow that I know of, or I, I thought of whenever he, before he said that, I'm like, there is something that runs off of some kind of heavy other than that, bow-wise, it's infinite ammo. You don't have to worry about that. 
And but like Break Brian is saying, this is kind of showing you just how the different reticles work. Whenever you're aiming in, and when you see an enemy, when an enemy's in the proximity of your your scope and everything else. Yeah, but you're getting information, right? How how much ammo or energy is available? So if uh, you're a stronger opponent and you need to, you know, hold, I guess, your bow back to build the energy up to have some more power behind it, right? You'll you'll have you'll have a, the information to know how long until you have a shot. See, right? that's just the thing, though. It is more of a quality of life change than it is a real player change because most of the people who have played in this game for years and years and years they know these weapons very very well unless these are new weapons new weapons with new bows new charge times new everything else most people that know this game can do this stuff without any of that right they just they just they just have the that they have the timing down but again New so, players, this might be really, really well. I mean, really, yeah. really nice. And, and to ju- if I can jump in here, gentlemen, the reason that Bungie is introducing these new changes to the reticle and whatnot is because they have taken into account feedback from players for this. Now, whether those are newer players or older players, I, I can't say because the This Week at Bungie article update did not say that. But the feedback conveyed that there is too little of information available with the reticles and players generally speaking have wanted more anyways let me go to brian thoughts i want to see it glitch out with risk runner okay (laughs) well you heard it here on the channel glitch out with risk that would be that would be the weapon that it would absolutely screw up on arc everywhere nope nope ain't gonna work We have recently come to understand that the Risk Runner does not work with the new reticle system. Therefore, we will be removing it from the game and to bring it back at a later time. Is that not Destiny's MO? I, uh, well, I we added I, this. It didn't work out right. Sorry, y'all. We're going to take that away. <laughs> in, the, in the update, the Risk Runner... I'm glad you mentioned that, Brian. The Risk Runner <laughs> is not mentioned. That's, That's my gun. Works. Yeah. Oh, so of course you love the risk runner. So Brian, no, Brian you're, a, be you're with something. a Trinity Ghoul. There you, there's your Trinity Ghoul right there. That's my favorite. Um, unfortunately, the guy, whoever, whoever this Bungie guy is, absolutely is a bot. We but need okay. to write, but write Bungie a letter. Say Jay is is dying to know. We need to. Talk about special guests. Know, I need we I, have I, I him or v- her as a special guest on this show. I want a one v one and whoever the heck this is because I mean this is gonna make it look funny. <laughs> well, I think it's only meant as a tutorial. I, I know, so, I know, yeah. but, but I mean I, I gotta have fun with it. As an advanced player as yourself, I can see how you think to yourself. Can I be a little more impressed? <laughs> <laughs> I'm always looking for the next step for Destiny because it's one of the games that I absolutely love. They should put like a zombie mode. Oh Un- god, no. unlimited enemies. Well, uh, horde mode, the, a horde mode. What's the Halloween event then? And uh, increasing difficulty though every round. I mean, they have increasing difficulty for basically if you get up to the actual end player game stuff, it is increasingly, increasingly more difficult. But it is just in order to get to that end game material you're playing like brian had previously stated before you're playing the same stuff over and over and over and over and over again to get there once you get to that that end game stuff it actually becomes a lot more fun a lot more difficult and like nick said the more challenging it is you you don't want to go into it the more disappointed you get the better the game actually is but Destiny is one of those games where you have to get to a certain point to get there first. Right. Now, I was going to add the the information you're getting in, in that new visual, right, which is trying to help out new players. If that helped out the new players to give them the information to equal the playing field, because one thing you, you don't want to see is new players leave because they're always picked on and, and weaker. Right, you want to increase the competition, and that competition 
tends to drive your, your scores and your fun up, right? So right, right. The more the more a game essentially, excuse my language, pisses you off, the more you want to actually engage in that game. Yeah. Yes. Reverse psychology there. Uh, front software. <laughs> we're, what? <laughs> we're getting to a segment that's relevant to From Software. You just wait, Kumar. Shut up, Kumar. Before, <laughs> to your opinion. All right. He, I think. He doesn't play Bloodborne. <laughs> oh, Bloodborne. My ultimate all time favorite game. Actually, the channel and the logo, I don't know if you've looked at it in depth, but the Bloodborne game, it inspired the channel and it inspired logo because in the game you look to discover insight as you go through Yarnum. the more insight you have the more you see of Yarnum. Yo, that is please displayed. god anyway. move to the next move to the next scene next i segment. can't stand watching this guy no more <laughs> Jake's about i mean I, I i i dude i literally i don't know find out what bungee operative did this i'm I, i'm i'm gonna well, call this him out in public i'm like dude please this is a I'm, youtube I'm I, will, you. I will send you the link Put a comment. Put a comment. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Please. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll send this to you after the show. I will send it to you. All right. That is our update for the weapon changes preview on <laughs> Destiny coming to season 21 season of the deep. Moving next. Kumar, you're going to be excited about this one. Mortal Kombat 1. Oh, baby. And a fan. An official announcement trailer has released the last pe- the last week, and a new era, gentlemen, has begun. Mortal Kombat 1 game will release across current-gen platforms, Nintendo Switch, and PC on September 19th, 2023. You were able to pre-order this as soon as May 19th, so that was within the last week. There is a beta. If you do pre-order, you can have access to the beta, and that is available in August. So what do we know? What, do we, what did we learn from the trailer? The NetherRealm story mode returns in Mortal Kombat 1, featuring unexpected plot terms, turns based on classic rivalries and original backstories. What would a Mortal Kombat game be without that? Someone is going to fight someone, and in those backstories... That is what you have. The game will have wide-ranging cast of legendary fighters, including, here you go, Kumar, the classic Sub-Zero and Scorpion, just to name a few. And there is going to be a Combat Pack DLC. Amazon Italy did show a listing for that. We covered this in a daily gaming update. But what you might be really excited about in the combat pack, which you will have to pay for separately. I mean, what, what would it be without that, right? But other than that, if you get through the fact that you have to pay for that, there is a Jean-Claude Van Damme skin that you can buy or that comes with the combat pack and you can apply it to Johnny Cage, which is poignant because, and it, it makes sense. Because Johnny Cage, he's a Hollywood actor, but an awesome martial arts expert. So is Jean-Claude Van Damme. It just makes sense. So Jean-Claude Van Damme, he's going to be in Mortal Kombat 1. Gentlemen, thoughts? Is the trailer awesome? Are you hyped? Yeah. I mean, how can you, li- how can you not like Mortal Kombat? I mean, right. that was one of the first games I ever <laughs> Brian. played. I mean, other than Atari. <laughs> I mean, this is one of the first games I ever played. I mean, how can you not like it? Yep. It's all about the death scenes. Yeah, oh, yeah, the brutality. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I, I, I remember when I was a kid, I pushed every damn button on the controller, just pop up. Oh, my gosh, oh, Button Master. Trying to find out how to do the day. Uh, button Master, absolutely. Yeah. Pop, 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 how could I get that fatality? How could I get it? How could I get it? Oh, and to just, memorize the combinations. Oh, my gosh. I, yeah, I think dude, that takes... I just, some some acumen indeed right there. Oh that hell, I didn't I didn't nasty. memorize I didn't memorize nothing. I just sat there and pop, 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 everything I could to see if I could get it. With the uh, button but back, it, it revealed button master. Yeah, it just dude, I, I loved that. 
Why should there be no. a controller drop for it that somehow will enhance that? Watch it yeah. happen. I mean, games evolve so much, though, unfortunately, for the this type of game that... Eh, I mean, I, I still love these series. I still love Mortal Kombat. I love the idea of it, everything else. But as far as, like, Battlefield and and Call of Duty... Is this going to be super, super popular? Yeah, I think a lot of people are going to buy this. However, is it going to stay in the like, top 10 charts for a long time? No. There's, there's going to be somebody programming a button to run, you know, one push of a button and it's going to run the combination. Macros. Yeah. Mac yeah. Zen, the Zen Cronus, or Cronus Zen, whatever the hell it is. Um, but, I mean... I was more a dead or alive fan. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know, they they fun fact. Fun fact. They held the intellectual patent on uh bouncing boobs in video games. I was just thinking <laughs> about the volleyball. Was it the volleyball dead or alive? Uh, dead or alive or beach volleyball. Beach volleyball, yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Every teenage boy's dream, right? Oh uh, dear lord. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, the yeah, brutality and provocative kills in Mortal Kombat. I remember the friendship, the fr was it friendship mode or the friendship effect that you could in, I think it was Mortal Kombat 11, you could do that where the person would say friendship and it would show, instead of a brutality killing, it would show two people being amicable. And the baby one. <laughs> and oh, so sensitive. Yeah. That's nice. At the end, they shook hands. Yeah, something. Uh, it, oh, a, 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 oh, I think one had balloons descending and uh, applauding, and the person would just collapse slowly. You should be able to. You should answer a few questions, and then it could define how the ending was. You know, to do you want to phone. see a sunset, or do you want to see the end right. of the world? Right, or the spine ripped out in the body. Right. Right? I mean, it's you so know. visually stimulating. Yeah, come on. A fantasy wise, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So Kumar remember is that? excited. Remember oh, the Kumar? game? Oh, yeah. yeah. Go ahead, yeah, Nick. I'm sorry. Remember the game you, you, you changed the destiny by the, the path you chose, right? That sort of style, right? Yeah. The it, decision based it, games. Yeah, decision based. It should be very similar on how the ending is, right? You could offer your handshake first instead of fighting and. And then, and then instead punch him in the face when, they put, when he extends his hand or actually handshake, right? Every, every action has an equal opposite reaction. You never know, right? Could end up like everybody gets together and has, has like a party and fun. Oh, that would change. Handshakes in Mortal Kombat. You heard it here first. Will they introduce it? That's right. Otherwise, it's going to be the same ending all the time. Each character is going to have one or two. That's why I said it, this, this game well, won't stay in the top ten for very long because it's still the same thing that they've done forever and ever and ever. A cool, again, cool ass game with the, especially the graphics and the fatalities. That's what the people were after the fatalities. Mm -hmm. the but fatality again, killings. It's. It's the same old the next, thing. The next Mortal Kombat, it'll it'll introduce uh, <laughs> bang, marry, or kill. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> and I like them all. I mean, the guy, one of them was poking in the eyes, another one was pu pulling the soul out. You know, but you don't see that very often. Not in today's well, world. I think that is our update. For Mortal Kombat 1. Moving to our next game. Lords of the Fallen. 2023. This is actually a remake of the same game. Lords of the Fallen. And that game was from 2014. Both of these are Souls-like games. Gameplay reveal was released May 17th for this, and that is what you are looking at now. Actually, you are looking at the extended gameplay reveal for this. Pre-order options are available, have been available since last week. 
for PC, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series X and S. There is a standard and deluxe edition for digital and physical. There is a collector's edition as well. A pre-order bonus, additionally, too. And we covered this in the daily gaming updates, or at least one daily gaming update for that. The plot. Well, it's a, it's a dark fantasy game. You are a crusader, customizable protagonist. You are engaging in a world that is ruled by a deer who is a demon god. And as you would expect with a Soulsborne type of game, which this is, there are going to be NPC quests and a single player campaign. What I am, what I found, what I didn't expect was the cooperative play option for this. And this was covered in a daily gaming update last week. I think it was the 19th this was covered. The cooperative play is going to work differently than, say, in Elden Ring, for example. You don't need an item to use or a bell, like from Bloodborne, to use to summon a player with one insight point given, where it is an option available without any items required. And when the person dies in the cooperative mode, the, that person that died enters or transitions into a spectator mode until revived. And the way that the source worded this, which we have in the description, is it's open to the host of the world also dying. The host of the world may transition into this spectator mode for the player that joined to revive. We don't have confirmation on that, but that's at least how this source presented it. So that is going to be an interesting dynamic to cooperative play, especially boss fights. Where if one falls, you can simply go, revive, continue the boss fight. I am so excited for this game. I get excited for all games, but especially, especially Soulsborne games. So, gentlemen, looking at this awesome, provocative, Which dark, platform deep trailer. Which platform this be on? So, this is going to be available. It's available for pre-order on PC, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and... Yes. I'm about to check this one out. Yeah. And I've I've been following it. It the announcement for it was circa August 13th, 2022. And I actually didn't think it was going to be ready to release as soon as it is. I didn't expect it 2023. This is designed in Unreal it Engine probably 5 won't be. as well. I mean, just saying, I mean, the, the games that I have been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for, they're, oh, 2022, oh, no, 2022, or 2023, no, no, 2024. I mean, it, 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 just like my last guest segment, you know, I've been waiting for a new MMORPG to release, and it's just... Starfield time. Right? It, it's oh, coming. Starfield! I hope your God, you're right. I hope the God is good. Well, this is a name... different. This is a different game than Starfield. Yeah, very <laughs> different game. I'm gonna pick it up. I'm not going to make the mistake of I. Hey, this happened with Elden Ring. Everyone got it on PC, and I didn't because I thought nobody else was going to play it. So I'm, <clears throat> I'm getting it on PC so that when. You, Jay, Joe, and Joe, you, Kumar, Joe, pick it up. Joe. I, I talked them into it. All right, all right. Look, where's your fire team play? Yeah. I didn't think uh, you guys were picking it up. I didn't hear up. you. What? I didn't, PC, I didn't think you guys uh -huh. were picking it up. Where, where, where is every, where, all your friends on here, where do they play? Hey, you know me. I, I like to explore hey. the other, I like to explore the other platforms and consoles, but I'm I picking this you up do, but on PC. PC Master Race. PC Master Race. Well, you heard it here. Jay's part of the PC Master Race. Right just, here, baby. I, I try to understand <laughs> the features, what makes the different platforms unique. So I'm an adventurer now, again, when it comes to that. Like we, I respect like we all of them. About, I do. Like we talked about before, you know, uh, Black Desert, you know, the, the, the what is it, Kronos? Uh, Kronos Odyssey. New, yeah, we talked about you. that on episode it, again, 5. Again, Xbox, PS5, they can do it, but Master Race. 
right. Well, Essentially, everything is a PC. <laughs> Technically. Look at that dog, man. That's a beautiful dog. All right. We Those don't need Brian. Fallen. We just need that dog. Can Brian make his... Can Brian, like, stick his hand up with that dog's butt and make a talk for him? What? <laughs> no, no, no back doors today. <laughs> Shut up, Kimar, damn it. You had to wait for the backdoor joke. You knew it would happen. It always does. Dead gun it. All, two shows thus far he's been in. Yeah, two shows. Out of four, Try I think trying. he's doing Dude, well. Dude, I'm sorry, bud. We don't need you. We just need the dog. Nick, how do you feel about <laughs> Lords of the Fallen? The graphics look great. Yeah, that's the Unreal Engine 5. Yeah. Carlos looked great. Is it third person or first person? Or either. I, my impression is it's third person from the gameplay yeah. that I've seen. Sorry, who did you say was the maker? Software? From Software? No, it's not from Software. That's... I do not have that information in front of I'm me. I'm curious who... Okay. I'll look it up. Yeah, I, I got it right here. That's why you need to wait for Throne in Liberty. Hex, but in Hex works, Software. It's Hex It's, a, it's the same idea. Kumar, it's Hexworks and Defiant Studios. With a better engine. With the, the publisher is CI Games. Oh. Yeah. And, and you said the, the Lord is, is uh, a, a deer? deer demon god. A deer demon god. This is Not his that one. its realm. Right. And these other enemies we see are manifestations from or is that, is that some not dark remind magic you? or malevolence that he has manifested. There's much more to this to unpack. I'm I'm really excited for it in October. October 13th. There is a lot of resemblance to this, though, to uh, Elden Ring. It lowers a lot. Well, of it, it is a Soulsborne. It is a dark fantasy. So it, it okay. does have elements all right, all right, all right. of that. It's not a from I software. I missed that time. part. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're you are fine. You are fine. Well, that is our Lords of the Fallen mm -hmm. update. Moving next, there's going to be a PlayStation showcase that is happening. It's going to take place on May 24th, 2023, Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, the wording showcase is significant. This is not a state of play. The difference, state of plays have been shorter. I've seen them to be 25 to 35 minute showcases. In this case, this showcase, according to PlayStation and details for it, is going to elapse a little over an hour. The scope of the showcase is going to be to PlayStation 5 and PlayStation VR 2. And there are some games that are anticipated for the showcase. I'm going to read a list of these. Gentlemen, I think you will be excited from what you hear. Marvel's Spider-Man 2. Marvel's Wolverine. We've been waiting a long time for Wolverine. There is some serious hype for that. Last of Us multiplayer. Horizon game multiplayer. An untitled live service game from Haven Studios and Firewalk Studios. This one's exciting. The remake of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic and a new title allegedly from Deviation Games. In addition, some updates on games we know are developing. Taken 8. Initially, this source said Mortal Kombat 12, but I think we have her answer for that. Mortal Kombat 1, though, I'm interested if there will be any more updates for that game in the showcase. I'm really excited about this one. Death Stranding 2, and lastly, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. So, I'm watching Brian's reaction. He loves PlayStation. Like, as soon as PlayStation popped up, he did this. Hey. I'm sitting there doing the same damn thing. I'm like, and, and, and. <laughs> I mean, no, there are very few games that, like, PlayStation comes out. Uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll play that. But is it worth me buying any kind of PlayStation platform? No. <laughs> I just buy a PC. Master Race. And, and I'll play it on that eventually. Wait for really the really PC ports. 
but the yeah, I mean, I, like, like Brian, one time Brian's, you can never play is Bloodborne. <laughs> Brian, as soon as the PlayStation thing came up, Brian's just like, and I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna mimic him. Jay, so, have you played any of the PlayStation ports? I, Last I of Us you. Part One, dude. Uh, so whenever I was, this one in the game, God of War like, Four, when I first started, uh, it God was, of War is fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. PlayStation. I had a PlayStation. I had an Xbox. You had a PlayStation? Oh my I god! I did. Believe it or not, I, I did not I, I, believe I had an this. Xbox. Uh, then I got an Xbox 360. Then I got a PlayStation Two. I'm recording. And I, you. I played both of them. And then I obviously migrated to the Xbox Microsoft things. Um, now, granted, it does suck that these two fight for each other and they. They, they, they fight for different studios. I mean, Xbox is one thing, PlayStation is another, but, 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 and, and some of these games could be actually absolutely awesome on either both consoles, but that's why you go to right here. Because normally, nine times out of ten, if an Xbox game gets released on Xbox, a PlayStation game will eventually get uh, placed on PC as well, as well as an Xbox game. So, you kind of get the best of both worlds. I played a little bit of this and played a little bit of that. I'm still an Xbox guy, even though Xbox has been disappointing recently. But again, that's yeah, a whole other topic. And yeah, let me Brian, provide... help me out, Br Brian, help me out. Get off mute, brother. Help me out. <laughs> let hey, me provide about, uh, the the counter argument here to why people are interested, why there are dedicated PlayStation fans. You feel the game. That is what the PlayStation, that is what PlayStation is focused on of, of many aspects it is focused on. It's controller, the integrated speaker, being able to hear Look at sound. Brian's face. Unmute the, yourself and please the, help me out. The adaptive, Unmute yourself. Help me out, dude. Adaptive, Come on. Tr adaptive triggers. Adaptive feedback. trigger my tail. Well, that don't for some, do I, and on. again, I am stating this is what people <laughs> respect and appreciate you about you. Be unmuted. Hallelujah. You mean the thing what? that Nintendo has been doing since the Wii? Reach. Well, okay, like, let's go not, back. It's not new technology. This is like, okay, so the adaptive triggers, they've been in like the Mad Cats controllers and stuff like that for years. Okay, cool. So you don't have to buy a third party controller immediately. You just have to buy, you know, the PlayStation controller. Cool. All right, check in the box. That's something that's a, a new thing. But you want to talk about the, oh, yeah, the, the triggers have their own vibrating motors. Okay. Well, the adaptive triggers. So it's the, right. it's you being know, but, it, pulling on it and it having a different feel, sensation. So drawing um, a bow, for example. But, but, but again, it's gimmicky. The speaker in the, the honestly, the 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 fact that you can use your your controller as a communication device is the absolute most toxic feature of the PlayStation Five, because every single person in a lobby talking with that microphone sounds like they're in they're they're it sounds like they're on a display model in Walmart. Every single one of them, because the the microphone in that controller is trash, and it's just it it's. Now the, you're talking about corning happening because the amplitude is so loud and the, the microphone can only receive so I mean, much. Of look, look, look. If you want a, a, an elite idea, okay, go do an elite Xbox controller. Same idea. Well, they have it's their... Uh, PlayStation has their own equivalent pro controller. I have not tried it. I have not been hands-on with again, it. Again, like Brian's saying, it's just a gimmick. You know what I bought? I, I used the... the um, again, I'm Xbox guy, right? I'm all about Xbox, right? So I bought, I, I, I've gone through every elite controller Xbox has had to sell. You know what I found actually is better? The Power A third party elite controller. It is not the Xbox or Microsoft controller, it is a Power A right here. This thing is actually better than any of the Xbox controllers that they've bought. Same thing with, with PlayStation. The adaptive controller, adaptive trigger, everything else. I've got the same controls on this this remote that I can 
change my daggone trigger sensitivity, change everything. I can go into my app, change all that other junk, map the buttons, everything else. It's the same thing. So PlayStation's marketing, like Brian said, they're marketing a gimmick. It's, it's, there's nothing better about PlayStation than there is Xbox. It's just that some of their studios, they do have some pretty good game titles that make With, the Xbox When better. you buy PlayStation, you buy an experience. That is what I think they are You're buying a to. game title. Everything sells experience. No, so so the and I'll tell you what the breakdown is. PlayStation specializes in in sports games and action RPGs and RPGs. So the people that are really into those genres of games will typically buy a PlayStation because that's what all their friends are playing, like Monster Hunter World or you know NFL or NHL or what have you. Oh, don't so, say Monster Hunter World to Joe. Except, except FIFA. <laughs> For some reason, FIFA is more popular on Xbox. No idea why. Um, but now that they're all pl- cross platform, that's kind of a moot point, you know. But like the exclusive titles that you'll get, like the the RPG titles and things like that, that'll be an exclusive PlayStation. Those are where those hardcore people come in. You know, the Xbox people are typically your first person shooters or your first person looter shooters and stuff like that. And and they have, you know, th- so they've kind of, or racing games, you know, so people have kind of found the niche for the two, the two consoles. And, and that's why you'll never really see them be eye to eye because, uh, because they're looking at two different things. You know, you could easily argue that Xbox was working on an experience far longer than PlayStation ever was because they had, you know, for a brief period with the Xbox one, they had the the integration with a media source. So you could plug your cable box directly into the back of the, the Xbox and be able to control it with on-screen menus from the Xbox, yeah. you know? So as, as far as a, a experience goes, both consoles have got their own experience. You, you, when you buy a console, it's typically just for brand loyalty or whatever genre games you're typically going for that have more exclusives for your, the platform that you're looking at. And he's absolutely right. I mean, it, it, again, when I grew up, Halo. Halo was the biggest thing in the world, right? From, from my area, my group, my friends. So we all gravitated towards Halo, which was an Xbox deal. People who, you know, Halo Land Park. A town three, towns four, towns over might have been gravitating towards a PlayStation exclusive game, which made them gravitate towards the PlayStation. It, it, it really is what you do like. However, Brian and I have both experienced what it is to play on an Xbox when everything became cross, cross-platform. We're trying to play with people who are play PlayStation, and it it just never worked out for us. I mean, we, we loved playing with people who were specifically on an Xbox console. Or a PC or a Windows platform. All right. With that said, let us know in the comments. Do you buy PlayStation for an experience you can feel in your hands or is it a gimmick? But before, gimmick. We, before we conclude this update, <laughs> Nick, Kumar, you've been quiet. We've had good debate here. Where, yeah, are, you, good. where are you jumping in on this? What's, what side? So, so first for me, console... You know, we were talking before and we talked about level playing fields drives the competition and the competition, you know, increases the fund, you know, that you have because, you know, you're playing on an even field. Nobody has an advantage. That's why I like console primarily because I want everybody to have a TV, have a console, have a controller. No other advantage. But right? see, look, Nick, Nick, I don't mean to cut you off, brother, but that's where it falls short, though, now. Because most of your AAA games are all cl- cross play. They're all well, cross play between your consoles and your PCs. So your PC guys are always going to have the advantage because they're going to be able to push more frames per second, more everything else. So you're, you're, you're uh, again, I don't know about. For sure, about the game that you play, um, but like Call of Duty, 
Well, uh, he, it's he's all battlefield. Cosplay. Nick is battlefield. Yeah, battlefield. Yeah. Now, pro, uh, Call of Duty, we can play that with PlayStation, Xbox, PC. It's all crossplay. So you you were you're right when Xbox One came out or PlayStation Four came out. It was all everybody was on an even playing field. Yes, it's so, not that way anymore, dude. So well, it is and it isn't. So I bought you know I I play only Battlefield. So I bought the Ultimate Edition, which means I have the Xbox One version and the Xbox X version. So I actually play the Xbox One version, which is against X, uh, you know, um, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and PlayStation players. But what it is not is against PC, right? Really? So I have. To play, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know that game did that. And like, I'm, I'm just, yeah. I'm thinking, I'm speaking like Call of Duty. I, right. I didn't. I didn't know that that game did specifically just console only. Call of Duty does all of it, and right. I promise you that my 240, you know, gigahertz monitor that my my computer can push out 280 frames per second. I've got an advantage. I know you do. That's why I don't play against PC players if I can avoid it. So, but but there is. I will say. If I play on the Xbox One console, I'm limited to 32 on 32, you know, and that keeps the scores and everything a little bit lower. I want the more the larger maps without playing uh, against PCs. Currently, Xbox won't allow that. They they actually don't let you 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 can shut crossplay up, but then the game never populates. Not because there's not enough players, but because they're not their algorithm requires. PC players to be included. Um, I've asked, you know, and mentioned it would be great if you could choose the platforms that you play with, right? Because because console players are going to choose other consoles, but not PC. There are but, certain games that allow that. Yep, yeah, but the one difference I have seen between the difference between Xbox uh, consoles and PlayStation, I've seen PlayStation be able to shut off cross-platform and still play the 128 player, the 64 on 64, which to me means that they have an advantage that I, sh I should have that equal access to shut that off and still play the 64 B64 on the Xbox Series X, but they're not allowing it. And um, so I will say that there was a period of time when PC players could not join the Battlefield game. It was broken and only console players were allowed to play. And for that couple of hours that were available, the games where cross-platform was shut off were filling, and people with just Xbox consoles were playing the 128-64-B64. So, you know, technically it was available. They just weren't allowing it. It, it revealed that, that the, the, the true... The truth was that, you know, which some uh, people have observed, that the room has to be like 50-50 or something. Yeah, um, I, didn't, I didn't get to experience that. So, I mean, I'm glad you, uh, you got to say it. Well, let, yeah. me, let me jump in. Let me get Kumar's thoughts here on the PlayStation Showcase. Because the discussion here is great for a guest segment for us to do. So, I don't want to transition away from it, saying it's a name guest segment, definitely. Nick, we'll, we'll talk more on that, too. But, Kumar. Thoughts on this PlayStation Showcase? Are you excited? Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, looking forward to a few games. Hopefully, they saw Final Fantasy. Is it a That's gimmick, or is it an experience you can play and feel in your hands? Uh, gimmick. Gimmick. What? I like what? some what? of the exclusive games. That's it. All right. All right. Well, you heard it here. Kumar's excited. He likes experience. He likes the experience. All right. Well. That is our update for the PlayStation Showcase. It's a gimmick, apparently. I'm outnumbered. <laughs> for our next update, oh. GeForce Now Thursday, GFN, GFN Thursday, though this one is different than the ones we've done in the past where we just announce games and say you can play these now in the cloud. Yes, Gears 5 is available to play now in the NVIDIA cloud, but there's a significance behind playing Gears 5 in the cloud. And there is a developing partnership or 
an already developed partnership where Xbox PC game support is coming to GeForce now. So games like Deathloop, for example, and Grounded and Pentiment, and those are actually going to release to be able to play in the cloud on the 25th on Thursday. But there's going, there's a synergy here. There's going to be further integration. And I looked into this and I saw that to play Gears 5, I would need to link my Steam account, having purchased it from Steam, to be able to play. So those that are purchasing these games on Steam that are Xbox PC games, per se, you can play them in the cloud. So this partnership, gentlemen, thoughts on this? Are you excited, not excited? I mean, I'm... I'm Microsoft, Xbox, whatever. Link my account. Theme, link my account. Gears is such an iconic Xbox game. Love it. it Gears 5 is probably actually my least favorite of them all. But I mean, still, Gears in general, that's a dang old well, Mar- Marcus game. Phoenix and his father, Adam Phoenix, they really defined that that genre though i will say don't forget about coltrane don't oh forget, god yeah don't forget that coltrane, he was that that action comic blockbuster hero yeah yeah the only downside between gears 5 and any other gears is they turn the dagon you know your regular weapon into a dagon machine gun and it would wreck anybody from any distance possible i'm hoping that you know since i've played it they've changed that and they've kind of dumbed it down but your NAR shotgun back in the day was just amazing around a corner. I actually haven't played this in a while, and I really, really miss it. So I wouldn't have any issue at all, you know, putting my Steam profile into my Xbox profile. Not a problem. Brian, Nick, Kumar, feel free to jump in here. Thoughts on this? Do sure. to play this one. What did you say, Kumar? Still need to play this one. You never play Gears? No, no, no. Uh, no Gears five. five. Oh, Gears. okay. Yeah, ge- yeah. Gears four and below was the best. Gears five is eh, okay. Gears, Gears five is Gears four part two. That's that's yeah. What I mean. But they 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 revamped the weapons the way they uh, yeah. like Destiny. You know, Destiny always is constantly tuning their weapons, tuning this, tuning that. You know, every once in a while they mess up and they make like one weapon like unbelievably powerful compared to the rest of them. Let me ask Brian. Gears, Gears did that. Brian is. Brian is. Brian's struggling. got that look. He's Brian's got, got that, that look. look. Come what? on, Brian. Talk to us, Brian. What happened? Drop some knowledge. No, nothing happened. I just. I haven't played a Gears game since Gears 3, and I just. I've had zero interest. I, oh. I don't know. Gears 3 probably was the best of them. Yes, I agree. It's my favorite. Nothing against Kate Diaz in 4 and 5. She's a, a strong oh, female protagonist. Who cares about the actress or actor who plays it? It's the game. We don't care about that crap. It's the game. Well, I play these for the story. Anyways, Brian, go ahead. Talk to us. It was kind of just like, I don't know. Gears is one of those games that I I I, I personally think of it like the video game tr- uh, the video game version of Tremors. It's mm. like the first one, you know, it was quirky, it was weird, people kind of liked it, it was corny, or you know, people hated it, and then it just got this cult following, and they just kept releasing Tremors movies. Yeah, where well, they have five of them it's now. Kind of the same. Hey, Brian, 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 wait, wait, wait. What's Are you talking Tremors about Tremors Destiny? Or you're talking about Gears. I'm talking about gears. Trim- <laughs> well, he was talking about tremors relating gears. I know, to I know. I'm just messing with him because Destiny's the same damn way. <laughs> but you know, I, don't know. I think I think gears and gears is a it, it, it was a solid <laughs> franchise. It still is a solid franchise with a solid following. Um, I think it's a little weird that you kind of have to go through this this weird process to be able to authenticate the fact that you own it if you purchased it through Microsoft as opposed to through Steam. Um, but I, but this, that's the whole reason why Steam's getting sued, right? So you know we'll we'll see what happens with all that. Agreed. We will see yeah. what happens. Nick Kumar, Nick, 
Sure. Think? I think the, um, the real value of the discussion is the cloud, right? Yes. So I would the experience we had when a, with a friend who was in the hospital who <laughs> wanted to play. No, not that guy. No, it doesn't like work like that. Um, but who exactly the movie. you sent the link to to um, enable him to play Battlefield from the hospital on his That's phone. That's right, yeah, because he didn't have his console with him. It Yeah, and here's the interesting part. He had a lightweight client. Right, but he ended up playing the Xbox Series X version. He didn't even have the Xbox Series X version, right? He only had the Xbox Series uh, 1 version. He, you know, uh, so he was a, able to play on the iPhone the Xbox Series X version. You know, obviously it was, uh, you know, Battle Pass or if it was a free free version from, uh, what is it, Xbox Pass. So it sounds like he was, he was streaming, not, necessar not necessarily leveraging a cloud platform like NVIDIA Cloud or the Xbox Cloud to play it. Correct me if I'm... I'm no, he's using the Xbox Cloud. You said oh, the link. Okay, okay. To, to Xbox, but he's playing the Xbox uh, X Series game, which okay. is the larger game, which he does he couldn't normally play from his console because he only had the Xbox One. So it enabled him, I mean, to easily... You know, the key value here is that you can play any game now from anywhere. Accessibility. I mean, Cloud makes it accessibility yeah, through yeah, but, but if you pay attention to that, the the games don't stream at the maximum resolution that your connection supports. It's only yeah. 1080p. I think it's 1080p 60 frames. All yeah. your streaming stuff. Depend all yeah, your cloud stuff is like that. Depending on the software, too. Some some platforms allow you to change those settings. Like on the NVIDIA Shield, I can change the setting within and, the. Oh, I'm right. so it's like I appreciate I appreciate the fact that we're in a virtual environment, and I'll shoot you, and you know I'll see you as uh, being shot, but you'll have made it around the corner, or vice versa. And other people go like, "Oh, I can't believe it! I was around the corner when you know you got shot because somebody else somebody else's view was better than your view." And you know me, I'm like, ah, it's technology. It's it's a virtual world. We're playing around the world. Appreciate the tech. And some of us go, yeah, it's only that's the stuff that ticks me off the most. Come on, Nick, that drives me absolutely batshit. That just I've got I've got a monster machine that will show me anybody before they hit that corner, and then I'll I'll blast them in the head, and nothing. And yep. then two seconds later, they snipe me in the head, and I don't see him because of the lag. Yeah, ah, that drives me nuts. Just a and lonely man me... there on the corner, saying, yep. uh, "I don't know." Notice, notice the hardware didn't matter; the connection did. That's right? it. It's connecting people together. That's what gaming does. It's the connection. Uh, no, that... no, you're absolutely right. The connection means a lot, like Nick is saying. The connection means a lot. But when you, you pay for, you know, a one gig service and you have a machine like this and you, 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 you do all that, when you play against other people that have that, it's obvious. Whenever you play against somebody who's working off of their 3G at, you know, the car shop while they're waiting for the truck to come out of the shop, it drives you absolutely crazy because <laughs> they're bouncing all over the field and everything else you're shooting them shooting them shooting them. they ain't taking damage and all of a sudden you die from them you're like wait what <laughs> yep so yeah so keep that in mind folks everything mm. all right i think that is our update for gfn thursday what a show it was quite a collection Transitioning now to our it's guest more, segment. Apparently. Brian is our special guest, or part of the panel. Now, excuse me. The panelist that will be handling this segment, though I will get us started. The topic, NVIDIA is releasing the this month in May. This isn't fair. This isn't the, fair. The 4060 oh, Ti. <laughs> 8 gigabyte VRAM. We're going to talk about these numbers. Now, these numbers are not on here because I, Joe, agree with everything on the screen. No, these numbers know, are here but to I goad discussion, to get to the true meaning of what do we think about these numbers? 
Where's my 3090 Ti? It was not on this bench uh-huh. test, but that's right. This is fixed. Brian fixed this. Well, Brian, Brian's <laughs> going to Brian's going to talk about that. He is going to talk I know, about that. Good, good. I, no, I'm just messing with Brian. I will say, well, I, I gotta, I gotta, I, dude, I requested Brian to be a on an episode request. with me. Yeah, and was, I, it, so I've got to mess with him. <laughs> yeah. Now, understandable, understandable. I will at least get us jumped off here with why we're talking about this. Nvidia, they are releasing the 4060 cards. That's the 4060, the non-TI, and then Junk. two versions of the TI, the 8 gigabyte and the 16 gigabyte card. And the 8 gigabyte is going to release this May the 16 gigabyte TI and the non TI 4060 are going to be released in July. One may be the first half and the other may be the second half. And let's talk about pricing for a moment. The 4060 TI with 8 gigabyte VRAM version is going to release for $399. And that is the same price that the 3060 TI launched in 2020. So the 4060 Ti with 16 gigabyte VRAM, that's going to be $100 more for you gentlemen at $499. The 4060 non-Ti will release at $299, whereas the 3060 non-Ti released at $329. So we have some price differentiation there. The 4060 has a lower TGP total graphics power than the 3060 and 3060 Ti card when you compare the the 40,000 line to that. I also found it very interesting that the memory bandwidth is different for these. The memory bandwidth in the 4060 cards is lower to the respective comparison of the 30,000 line. And with that, Brian... I got to talk what Ryan does so he don't get me. <laughs> so, um, I'm an NVIDIA guy, right? I got an MSI 3090 Ti. Okay. So, 3090 obviously in on the charts. But I've already know where this is going. The 40 series NVIDIA cards are a dang on joke. They're a joke all day long. And you're not the only one that feels that way, I will say. No, 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 no. They're a joke. uh, My 3090 Ti will put up against the 4090 all day long. When you talk about the Radeon, the Radeon could, the, the newest series Radeon could probably blow the 4090 Ti away, or the 4090, sorry, Ti, or. Is there a 49 Ti? I'm not really sure. No, the 49, you can blow it away. You can probably blow my 3090 Ti away. Um, AMD and and NVIDIA are in this major, major battle, but my 3090 Ti has done absolutely amazing. But, okay, Brian, tell me how bad my shit well, is. Before... Before I, I give it to Brian, let me industry. look at this smile me, on his dang old face. Let me ask. Look at this smile on his face. Let <laughs> me ask Brian before I hand it off to you, Brian. Do you want me to talk about the significance of the May twenty fourth launch date of the forty sixty Ti eight gigabyte? No, and don't talk about the forty sixty or the forty eighty. Don't talk about the forty seventy, forty eighty, or the forty nine. Don't just, just, just hand leave it, it out. Just, just, just give it to him. Give it to him. He's fine. He's good. <laughs> because I... Oh, okay, I'll All just right. hand it off, Brian. You you let me know when you want me to come back in with detail. The spotlight yeah. is yours, sir. So, um... This is a, a pretty interesting quote-unquote leak. Um... The, the reason why it's interesting is because it follows a pattern that NVIDIA has done for years. Um... So these these are not to be taken as official benchmarks. They are confirmed as running on press review drivers, which are not production release drivers. They are preview. Here's you can run some benchmarks and get first impressions kind of of reviews. 
So that's what these cards are. They are binned, handpicked by NVIDIA to hand out to reviewers to run benchmarks and leak them out so that way there's hype built around it. They've done it with every single line of cards since AMD came back into the game. I, I will say that these numbers are entirely inflated. Um, the other thing that's fun to mention is the 7600 wasn't even review drivers. The 7600s that were tested, which is also an unreleased card, those are running off of the, uh, the test benchmark. So these are like not even, not even review sample drivers. These are tech sample drivers. So we're not talking about any kind of production drivers. We're not talking about, you know, any kind of, of one-to-one, -one, you know, in a, a high-performance motherboard versus a budget motherboard versus any kind of other situation. These are very preliminary numbers. I, I would hesitate. I, I, I would hesitate to say that the, the Radeon's going to cap out there. I think, I think what you'll see is the Radeon numbers will come up a little bit and the 40. Oh. Did we lose him? The 4060. Oh, the 4060 Ti is being released, which is already a second iteration of a card. And then they're releasing the third iteration of the same card in the form of the TI-16 gig. And, and AMD is releasing the 7600. Yeah. One card. If you look at the rest of the lineup from last, the, the last couple of years, you've got the 6600. The 6600 XT, the 6650 XT, kind of follows that same pattern, right? That I guarantee you, the the 7600 XT and the 7650 XT that end up releasing are going to directly target those corresponding uh, Nvidia cards for both price point, spec, and performance. No, AMD so, will beat. AMD will beat NVIDIA's price point, is what you mean. Uh, price for performance will be a better, a better deal with, with AMD. Uh, the thing is, so the true benefit to an AMD, uh, an AMD card is if you're running an entire AMD platform. If you're running any of the newer generation chips, you have the Infinity Fabric between, uh, or I don't remember if it's the Infinity, I might be getting my terminology mixed up. Um, the infinity cache, thank you. Yeah. Um, but basically, it, it acts as one shared cache pool between your memory and your graphics, you know. So, very low latency communication between the GPU and the CPU. You, you don't get that unless you're running a full AMD platform. So, you get the, the folks that are you know, hardcore Intel people. I don't know why those people still exist, but they do. Yeah, Brian. Um, you know, so so you get the Team Blue people, and the Team Blue people aren't going to get the performance boost from AMD by, by having the corresponding products. So they're going to go, well, I'm going to perform better on my platform by using NVIDIA. You know, so so typically that's what you'll see is the Intel people stick team green and then the AMD people realize the benefit of using complete AMD platform. It's not wrong. So. I mean, literally, when I was uh, building my new machine, I, I strongly considered going AMD everything. I mean... If it wasn't for the price that I got for my 12th gen, you know, 12900, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have went for it. Um, and again, it's the same thing with my NVIDIA card. It just, and it, it all depends on when you buy and, and, and what generation and what time you buy. You know, I bought whenever NVIDIA was actually not that bad for the price of the chip that I got. I got a 3090 Ti. Like I said, Intel, you know, thir uh, 
twelve nine hundred K. If it would but like Brian's saying, if you buy the same gen version of the CPU AMD and Radeon which is AMD, you could outbeat me all day long. It just what's available, when it's available, and again, there are people there are AMD people. And there are Intel people or a NVIDIA people. I mean, it just, I can't disagree or agree with them because what I've got works really, really, really well. But maybe two, three months later, maybe I'd have been an AMD old, I mean, a whole AMD system. Nick Kumar, are you buying a 4060 Ti? No. It's uh, great for a budget. Uh, gamers, don't buy that. Buy it. Buy Entry thirty. Level. It's yeah, no, 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 no. Buy thirty series all day long. Don't buy anything forty series yet. The L that if you look at any of your bigger YouTube guys too, like Nexus Game or um, Jay's Two Cents, and like that, they 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 all agree that the forty series Nvidia cards are a joke. If you're gonna go with anything forty series Nvidia. You might as well go AMD because the AMD is going to blow the uh, NVIDIA stuff away. You know, the 40... NVIDIA had to come out with something because AMD was coming out with their new card and they had to have something. So they, they rushed and pushed this 40 series card out, which is a joke. I mean, anybody who's buying... If you have to have NVIDIA... Right now, as of right now, buy a 30 series card. 39 Ti is the best card you can buy for <laughs> NVIDIA, right? If you push 40 series, it's just not worth the money as much as they cost. I mean, especially when, you know, the 5 series is going to be coming out, what, six months from now? We Maybe it'll be better. We, well, we don't know for yeah. sure. But, I mean, again, it, it's not worth the money to buy. And, again... You look at the, the, the retail market, go to Amazon right now and look at uh, the people who are looking even for the 20 series cards versus the, the four. Those 20 series, like the 2080 Ti's, the 3080 Ti's, 39 Ti's, they're actually more expensive than what the 4090's are. Brian, thoughts on this? So, so... I mean, I, I completely agree. I think the the assessment on, uh, you know, I, I feel like as much as AMD has been a market disruptor in both CPUs and GPUs, I think that NVIDIA has gone to market confuser. Release a whole bunch of SKUs. Get everybody talking about NVIDIA, whether it's positive hype. or negative. Up, they they try to hype it, it up. Right. And then it's going to drum up the people to go buy it anyway. So, you know, but but to Jay's point, um, you know, you look at a card that is is actually when did I get that card? I got that card almost two years ago. My, my 5950, my 50 or 6950 XT we, liquid double. Was that the one in Micro Center that you went? Yeah. There? Yep. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. That, I remember that. I was bought there. it on a whim. Yep. Yep. It's still one of the best graphics cards on the market. You really and, wanted and that, that 4090, card, and I said no. And, and how many cards has NVIDIA come out with since then that they say it was going to trounce all of the cards of the previous year combined? Yeah, some of them do outperform it a little bit on on like the 8K gaming specs that they've started putting out because everybody's playing it. Hey, right? <laughs> right. What? Well, and- so where that comes in, and this is an interesting fact, um, when you dual screen, if you are running two, if you're running two 4K displays, that's the equivalent graphically of running one 8K display. So where that becomes relevant is if you're pushing out two 4K signals to two 4K monitors because you're that kind of person that wants that Forza experience. You know, you need to be able to put out a resolution. So I get that. There is a use case for it. 
However, there, that's a very small part of the demographic. You know, most people require, you know, most people require two 1440p displays for your average gamer. Right. You know, or an ultra-wide 1440p. Right, right. So, right. you know, it's just, it's like, let's, let's put out all these specs for, for future things and, and things that we're not doing yet and make it seem like our product is great. And it's like, okay, cool. If, if you want to slap your wiener down on the desk and go, hey, mine's bigger, that's fine. But it'll do everything that your average game needs to do. You know, I, would I, would I, I, I would say if you're building a, a rig that you wanted to play Fortnite with or, or PUBG or you want to build a, a computer for your kids, you know what? The 3060 or the 4060 Ti is a perfect card for you because it's a low price point. And it's it's going to get the job done. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, you're your 13 year old kid who's going to get their first, you know, self-built computer. They're going to get a, a, a 4090. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, you know, so so each card has their place. And I think entry level builders have been neglected for a while. And, and this is going to be that entry level builder card. I mean, uh, Brian's point. I mean, what was the, the 1660 Ti version that came out with NVIDIA? That was your entry level, you know, NVIDIA card that came out right before the 40 series. It was the same idea. It was your entry level build. I mean, same idea with NVIDIA. It, it, it's the same idea. I, that's what I was trying to get across. You know, when you're building your own brand new machine, if you're going to be the one to actually build it, Look at your price points. Look at what your CPUs are going to cost. Look at what your GPUs are going to cost. At that point, NVIDIA and, and AMD are so they're, they're battling for that number one spot. That what maybe you know once uh, one month that NVIDIA, hey, look, they're actually better price point, better GPU. Next month, it might be NVIDIA. It just so happened to be whenever I built my machine that. NVIDIA was the best at the point besides the 40 series. Now, when I built this or built my or put my new GPU in, I uh, the 40 series was out. But at looking at the benchmarks and everything else, the actual the AMD beat the 40 actually beat all the 40 series stuff. And like I said, that's why I said that the, the, the NVIDIA pushed out their product so fast just to try to get something out in a response to the AMD stuff that the AMD or the uh, NVIDIA 3090 Ti what my, my, my machine's what 2% less than the 4090 why would you pay an extra thousand dollars for a GPU that only gets 2% more why I mean it my machine will play any game, every game that I want it to at 200 plus frames per second all day long. Flight simulator. Shut up, Kumar. Well, <laughs> I, I will say, Jay, I will say this. This is what NVIDIA, and I, I call this master marketing. Brian, you may have more insight. Into no, this, Brian's, but, I mean, again, but, this is where Brian and I actually completely agree well, on things. I wanted, He's a big AMD guy. I'm a, I'm an I, NVIDIA I want to, Intel guy, but but I want to provide a an answer, whether it's the best answer or not the best answer, but it's at least an answer to your question. And I say this objectively: when the four thousand cards were introduced, you had Cyberpunk 2077 show off, introducing path tracing into Cyberpunk. It looks awesome. It looks visually awesome. But it was path a mess. Tracing. Path tracing has attributes that the ray tracing that we are accustomed to in previous gener generations or generation, it's, it's not the same as path tracing in the way that the light is measured and how it reflects is different. And NVIDIA pushed, well, your 40,000 cards are going to be the best at this. And it was the 4090 that was the showcase for path tracing with Cyberpunk. And then saying, well, if you want awesome frame rates, 
with path tracing, you need DLSS 3 or 3.0 and the 40,000 series cards, talking about the 4090, and in this case for what they were introducing, that is what's going to give you, that is what is compatible with our DLSS 3. So the idea of you want the best ray tracing with path tracing, you want the best frame rate, you get our 40,000. Now, the I haven't done tests on this myself, but I am not under the impression that you cannot use path tracing with a 30,000 card. I still think you can enable it and use it with a 30,000 card, but the marketing aspect is the 40,000s are going to work better or the 4,000 series is going to work better than the 3,000 series, but we don't have those numbers in front of us, that data in front of us. But the answer to your query, if I'm a fanboy NVIDIA person and I hear NVIDIA talking about this, I go, whoa, I want the best. I want, I'm an, I, I just want it all. I want the path tracing. I want the high frame rate. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend that extra buck if I have it. I get it from my parents. I get it from whoever. I'm going to spend it if I can. So that is why. But that doesn't mean it's the right or the best action to take. I also will add another tidbit that I it, this is not a plug-and-play scenario where you just get the 4090 and it works awesome. Every game is different. Tuning with settings, GeForce experience, the drivers. I have tried the same game with different drivers. I've had no, no, different and that's the same way with AMD and NVIDIA, too. Certain games work, do work better, supposedly, per driver for NVIDIA. And there are certain games who actually will give you better FPS and everything else with AMD. It, it depends. Again, that's why I'm talking about like, you know, people who are building brand new machines. It's, it's not a, an NVIDIA is better than AMD. It's what can you get for the price point right now? Yeah. So I think I need to summarize. Console. Thank you very much. <laughs> you just call me a Brian. We got this. Brian and I, we'll, we'll hook you up. <laughs> we'll send him a I know, forty th uh, four thousand series card. Ryan and I, I know we, we 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 played together. Um, let's see, PlayStation. Uh, uh. Him, AMD, me. I don't know. <laughs> like I said, it, it, I've had play plenty. I, I've had AMD systems in before in the past. I swore by them. I mean, I beat the crap out of them. They would last forever, but. Um, again, I've built NVIDIA systems the same way I beat the crap out of them. Just when I built my machine, it was just NVIDIA was king at that point, and it it ruled out. And I'm, I'm, Brian and I have had arguments while playing on a fire team together about NVIDIA and AMD. Good memories. It, it's never, it, it's never good. good yeah, good memories. Good memory. Absolutely, but it's never going to end. <laughs> got an Astro headset you got on there? Don't me? Yeah. Well, my headset? Those are Astros, yeah. right? Those are Astros, bro. Yeah. 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 All right. These are stock. I I didn't change anything about them. I didn't. I'm again. If I'm gonna put more money into things, it's gonna be my machine, not not my headsets. <laughs> now these are. Yeah, those pretty, are the Astro A fifties, right? Well, yeah, they're 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 uh they're good machines. I mean, are good good accessories. That's for dang good sure. I love them. Before I we... can't, you, you cannot beat the uh, surround sound 3D. If I'm playing a game like Apex or something like that, you know, I can tell if somebody's above me, below me, right side, left side. I mean, they they're good. That's what I have too. I like before yeah, we boy. before we go on a tangent, any other thoughts before we close our our special segment? Special as long as Brian's segment. not allowed to talk. Yeah, console is obviously superior. And, you know, <laughs> problems doesn't cost as much. I mean, it costs as much as a card. No, it doesn't cost as much until it breaks. And then you got to buy a whole brand new one. <laughs> See, the, the thing is... Well, you is can if, burn out cards. I mean, if you try overclocking. No, if this breaks, I can find the replacement part and replace it. If an Xbox breaks, I gotta buy yep. a whole Xbox so they flash that crap. And, and don't get me wrong, I have you bought the flashing gear. 
I had bought the flashing gear to try to reflash hard drives, whatever else. It don't work. Microsoft has absolutely got the edge on that stuff. But I don't know about I don't know about PlayStation. I've never tried. So I mean, but Xbox, if it breaks, it breaks. It's done. This is higher entry level cost, but worth it in the long run. So uh, what, I'll, what I'll say is <clears throat> the the leak the leak performance benchmarks that came out uh, take them with a grain of salt. These are not going to be accurate representations of the actual release cards with release drivers, uh, release firmware, and release hardware. It, we don't know whether these are reference cards versus third party cards. But they were press release drivers. Um, you know, the 7600 was development drivers. Neither card has been released. So, you know, I would wait for the actual reviews to come out before, you know, before actually making a decision based off of benchmarks. Um, if you're going to pre order something, go with your gut. Um, you know, don't necessarily believe the, the, the pre release uh, benchmarks. That's, that's yeah. what I'll. That. Yeah, Brian's right. Don't don't. This chart is way too early. You know, AMD might blow away Nvidia. Yet you don't know that. You gotta wait and actually see. You know, Jay's two cents, uh, Nexus Gamer. Those those guys that have the other YouTube channels too. They are really really good at testing this equipment, like in real life. With specific games and everything else, they're going to show you. And like Brian, this could be a specific game. This might not be a. This might be a game specifically that would benefit uh, Nvidia. Um, there are a lot of other games out there that would well, these specifically are, these benefit. These are benchmark. These are benchmark software. So time right, but we we've seen in the past that manufacturers of press release drivers have tailored them to perform oh, better. Right. Understood. Yeah. I mean, okay. it, it's it's not going to be specifically. I mean, there are going to be certain games and certain things out there that process better on different games. I mean, it, it that that's boils down to even to your your CPU. Which is crazy to think about, but there are certain games that will actually give you more frames per second because they're more CPU demanding than Threaded they are optimization. GPU. Right, right, yeah, right, right. CPU right. Again, supports generating frames, and that depends on like what kind of system you're running. If you're running a PC, like I am, I, I've got different things, you know, uh, uh, overclocked, and it, my my mine's a twelve nine hundred K, right? And I've got you know what. I was supposed to have eight E cores, eight P cores. Well, I've changed mine over through BIOS, and I have actually, you know, uh, uh, 16 P cores now, where it, it based on performance. And then when I might boot a specific game, it is actually focusing those P cores on the game and not just everything else going on in the background. It, it, it depends all on what they've done. These numbers could mean what Brian's point is. These aren't real. You don't know what they're actually going to be until you get somebody, a third party like us or whoever else, to actually show you what, hey, this game's getting this with this card. You, you have a what? Joe, what do you have? You have 30. Well, I, I, I think these aren't meaningful because, right. as Brian said, right, right, first right. release drivers, this is inflated it's the press release drivers are made to make that would be a good that would be a good video later on yeah. for us and, you know, and what are you what are you running joe you're running a 3080 yeah 3080 ti and uh brian what are you running amd something yeah he's AMD. 6950 xt uh power color yeah. liquid devil okay and i'm running a 39 ti this would be one of those opportunities for us to say okay well let's run the exact same game Underneath the exact same uh, performance module uh, in in the game, right? Say high, low, whatever else, and actually get our frames per second and everything else, and and be able to put that in our brand, yeah. our own version of our own chart, and show, hey, look, this is what's actually happening. Well, we have the channel. We it's our channel. We can do what we want. 
I'll, I'll play it on console. And, and then we <laughs> will have Nick's console numbers. And, and Kumar, we'll just throw in your flight simulator numbers. Yes, we'll just, just to an keep outlier. it. Well, no, no, no. Uh, console stuff, because there are a lot of people. I mean, there's probably more people on console than there is a PC. Really. There, there really are. I mean, because consoles are just so much more easily obtainable. And you don't have to tweak and modify them. Right. And exactly. Problem. You know, you've, got, you've got people like me who I've built my own machine and I've tweaked them and I've overclocked things and I've done different things like that. Now, again, and that would be another thing, Joe, that we would have to talk about whenever we, uh, if we would ever do a video like that. Like, okay, this, your 3080 is getting this, my 39 Ti is that, um, Brian's, you know, AMD is getting this, but mine's actually overclocked. So yeah. you'd have well, to figure out, well, and, and Kumar's got a 3090 Ti, or 3090, does he not? I got 3080. 3080. Well, before before we get tangential, let's wrap up our, our segment here. Yes, sir. I yes, think, sir. I think Brian concluded it best. We will leave it at that. And that is our segment on the 4060 and 4060 Ti's. Transitioning to our conclusion of the show, episode 7. We are available on podcasts through podcast services, including Google Podcasts or Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Pandora, and Deezer. Do look for the logo, Gaming for Insight, for your daily gaming updates. Those are every day, Monday through Friday, except for Saturday and Sunday to get those out. Those are short updates for you, three to five minutes. And then, of course, our last week in gaming episodes which are our longer episodes, those are once a week. So look for the logo and Gaming for Insight on your services. But before we conclude, I want to throw out a question for those watching, those listening, to get to know our panelists, I will say panelists, not special guests, our panelists better. Something short, hopefully short. Favorite game of all time. We'll go around. Jay, start with you. Favorite game all time. What comes to your head? It's, it passes somebody else for a minute. All right, Brian, favorite game all time. I can't. You can't. Okay. Nick, uh, I think I know the answer, but favorite game all time. It, it would be Battlefield. Battlefield, you which one? You would play one game. <laughs> it would be on console, and it would be with a good connection. So, it, folks out there, get your connection speed up, pay that bill, and get a console. Is it Just one of the older, older Battlefield games? Well, you know, it's all about playing with friends. Okay, so, the, so it's just overall. I would more with friends and spending more time playing, and a lot of friends, and those were really good days. But, you know... There are tomorrow's days when we play with friends, and, you know, they're all good. Kumar, favorite game all time. I think I know the answer, but. No, it's not Flight 2. Oh, it's I'm not. A... <sighs> I don't know. It's too hard. All right. I said mine hey, right, is, Lord, is Bloodborne. Fantasy. Okay. So all yours right, is so, Final uh, Fantasy. It, it's got to be Halo. Halo. No, the I first? mean that, that's what that's what got me original into Halo. the original Halo. The, the okay. original Halo. The original okay. Halos is what got me in Xbox. I was a PlayStation. We had Playstations and Tories up until when Halo came out. When we got the original Xbox, it was a, a game. It was a game that came with the original Xbox for free. Yeah, I remember that. And and it was addicting as it's a, when, when the Xbox 360 came out. I played it throughout that. I mean, I I literally remained an xbox player specifically for halo yeah until they till 343 studios did what well, no. they did 343 wasn't terrible no okay yeah they're, they're pretty bad it's different it, it's, <laughs> it's different it's hot and cold yeah it's yeah. Hot and cold. but i mean again favorite game ever halo halo 3 halo 3 best oh, halo game 3. ever Halo 3. Halo, best game ever. I would go back if I could get that on PC now and go back and where everybody would reset and forget about the Halo from now till then. Tetris. There would be nobody playing Call of Duty, bro. It'd be all on. It'd be all Halo. Brian, favorite. Game. You know what? I, I, 
I don't know if I could say this is my favorite, but it's the only one that I can still go to this day and still play it for hours just because it's mindless and fun. But it's an old Super Nintendo game called Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Okay. <laughs> and and you walk around and you you collect different weapons to kill the zombies and and you know clear the levels and it's it's a lot of fun and it's it's just campy and and I don't know it, it's it's a it's a good little game. Well, you heard it here. Favorite games no. for the band said yours. Oh, I did. Oh, Bloodborne. Oh, okay. Bloodborne. Yeah. I would spend hours. All right, you're hours. a late gamer. I, you're you're a late gamer. That's fine. Oh no 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 no! I'm not just I'm not just a late gamer. I I will I will be honest. I got an I idea. Up, I will open up. I my mom is responsible for getting me into gaming. She bought me a game, Sid Meier Civilization Three, and no. the, re- the reason she she I played Frogger as a kid, and I was staying up late at night to regulate my blood glucose levels because sometimes bad sites, what have you, can cause you to need growth hormone, for example. And I would just watch TV originally, and she said, why don't you play this game? So I spent all this time playing Sid Meier Civilization Three, late at night, building civilizations when I needed to stay up. So that game is very dear to my heart, other than Bloodborne, I will say that. I think next segment, we should do a... Uh... Games by error. Games by error. <laughs> Favorite. So I, I yeah. di- diabetes transitioned me into gaming because it was something for me to do. But I, in time over the years, developed a strong, strong love. We need to do our, our our next episode is actually show our machines. Yeah. Again, there are a lot uh, of people who are watching your channel, Joe, who are trying to get into gaming. You've got Nick, who is a console gamer. You've got Joe, who is a PC gamer and console gamer. Kumar, again, the same, PC and console. You've got uh, Brian, who is, I think, a PC gamer. And you've got myself, who went from a originally a console to the Master Race. You're, and you're, you're, you're again, welcome. Shut up, Kumar. <laughs> um the rigs that we're playing on mean a lot to these younger players who are trying to get into the games and trying to get in, seeing what they're going to get, how they're going to play, what performance they're going to get in doing that. And I just want to clarify too. For me, I'm an explorer. I like to understand what the different platforms provide. And I... Oh, we know that. Yeah, I... We know I, that. You can play a game per week and... and Joe still, explores. I don't know. I don't, you play I explore every single daggone game there is out there. He I don't explores know every do door. He doesn't leave no doors in... Shut up. Get that gun, Kumar. <laughs> yeah, I, I like to... I like to understand what each platform provides. I like to take an objective approach. At least I think I do. And, and appreciate what each platform provides as unique and and special to a gamer. I digress. Good segment. Good show tonight. Any concluding thoughts? No. All good. It was really, really good to hang out with you guys. Nick, good to meet you, man. Brian, awesome to see you again, dude. Kumar, I'll see you at work. God only knows when. Well, with that said, in the words of Commander Shepard, Mass Effect. I should go.